Hi, one of the interesting questions I get always after getting diagnosis of epilepsy is that, doctor, I got all the testing done, EEG, brain MRI, and physical exam, all came back normal. Do I have epilepsy or do I still can be diagnosed with epilepsy with all the testing being normal? Well, to answer this question, it is important to know how accurate these tests are in diagnosis of epilepsy and how many times we have this diagnosis right. So to answer this question, I will tell you the information from this book, uh, Treatment of Epilepsy by Mayo Clinic Professors, which I got the honor to participate in the uh, authoring of one of the chapters in this book about first-time seizures and how these tests can be performed in patients with epilepsy. So here is how it works. So EEG is important in diagnosis of epilepsy. However, EEG has its own limitations and can only see changes in the brain in about 12 to 50%. So this means that about half of the time, EEG can be completely normal, and this is also consistent with diagnosis of epilepsy. So you can see abnormalities or excess electricity in minority of cases. And to get better EEG results, you can have sleep deprivation EEG, sleep during the EEG, because the EEG during sleep shows much more data and much more uh, abnormalities because the brain is quiet and any electricity excess we can be captured. Also, longer EEG. We can increase the chances of getting abnormalities captured on EEG by increasing the length of EEG, doing multiple hours or even one to two or three days. And studies have shown that it can reach up to 90% with repeating EEGs or doing a longer EEG. And the other test can be CT scan of the head. So CT scan computer tomography is a scan that we can look into the head. And this test is only used in emergency situation because it's a low quality, one interested at that time in emergency to rule out any bleeding in the brain or any tumor or anything that is big that can be seen. And if we have this test, usually we defer to a brain MRI. So brain MRI is much more accurate and can give us better information about the brain. So we can do a brain MRI and the chances of detecting any abnormalities is much higher because it's a much better detailed test. And important to know that not all MRIs are the same. So we have high quality MRI with thin cuts through the temporal lobe and epilepsy protocol, we call it, on a three Tesla MRI and is read by an experienced neuroradiologist that can detect those abnormalities because their eyes are highly trained to detect very subtle changes. And also myself, I look at my own scans because I have experience in reading them and so as all the other neurologists. So the one who reads MRI is very important. And the last thing is that the physical exam, most of the time physical exam is normal in epilepsy, but we can find some subtle changes, especially after the seizure with weakness in one side or inability to speak very well. So all of those are put together and then we can make the diagnosis of epilepsy based on the clinical presentation. The clinical presentation means that the history, the physical exam, description of the events, especially if you have a nice handy video of the event, somebody took a video of you when you had a seizure, then you can look at the, we can look at the video, analyze it and know if this is an epileptic seizure or if this is a different phenomenon. So it is important to know that epilepsy is a clinical diagnosis. Testing like EEG, brain MRI and CT scan can be additive and it can enhance the diagnosis or point to where the seizures are coming from, but they all can be normal and we can still make the diagnosis of epilepsy and start treatment. And to learn more about the treatment of epilepsy, I put the best 10 tips that you can follow to treat your seizures, get control of them in this video and stay healthy and see you in the next one. Salam.